Okay, this section is talking about how to graph hyperbolas. So hyperbolas have this kind of format. They look like ellipses. The difference is we got a minus sign there instead of a plus sign. So a couple things about uh, hyperbolas. Hyperbolas, again, are a shape that looks like this where you have two parabolas opening up in opposite directions is essentially what that looks like. In real life, if you put a lamp up against a wall, you'll see a hyperbolic pattern that occurs there. So that's what the general shape uh, is. Now, in the notes, I have two models of hyperbolas centered at zero, zero. You should make sure you review those before watching the rest of this video. Uh, Mikhail will be referring to some formulas and things there, so you wanna make sure you refer back to those in the notes before uh, moving on. So assuming you've already looked at that, let's go ahead and, and jump into this. Now, with the A and the B here, unlike the ellipses, it doesn't actually matter where the larger number actually is. In fact, the A is always going to be physically whatever is underneath the fraction before the minus sign. So uh, in front of the minus sign, the one that's the fraction that's positive, whatever is underneath that term there, automatically that's going to be A every single time. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one's larger. So in this section, you could have A could be larger or B could be larger. So in this case, if I look at that formula, my A, my A just coincidentally happens to be the larger one, but again, the, we're not picking it because it's the larger one, we're picking it because it's physically underneath that first fraction there. Your A is gonna be three, and your B is gonna be two, and we're still taking the square root of each of those numbers because uh, in the models that I have in the notes, this is A squared and that's B squared there. Now what tells, what tells you whether it opens up sideways or up and down, is whatever letter comes first there. So in the positive fraction, if that's an X, it opens up sideways. If a Y comes first in front of the minus sign, then it opens up and down. So in this case, this is one that opens up sideways uh, like this, okay? Now, we have a different formula for the C value. So this was given in the notes, but I'll go ahead and rewrite it here. The formula for C is the square root of A squared plus b squared. Now to make sure you don't get this confused with the ellipses one, because the ellipses one has a minus in it, one easy way you can remember that and keep them straight is the, the sign that's inside here, inside the square root, it always has to be opposite sign of the one that's in the formula itself. So if you have a minus sign there, that means we have a plus. If there's a plus inside here, that means that this has got to be a minus. So that's how you can keep those straight. So in this case for hyperbolas, because this is a minus sign, this has to be a plus. So we're going to put our information in here, and we get square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared, and that's 9 plus 4, you get the square root of 13 as a result. So now that we have had this complete, we actually can start answering some of these questions here. So for the center, if you don't see any parentheses uh, involved there, that means automatically your center is going to have to be uh, 0, 0. The vertices and the foci, I'm going to hold off on that. I know there's some formulas I gave in the notes, but I'm going to go ahead and read those off the graph itself. Uh, and I'll jump, jump down and do these. Now, for the asymptotes, if you look at the, uh, the formula, the formula that's in the notes says that if, it, if you have it centered at 0, 0, opening up sideways like we do here, then it's basically going to be y equals plus or minus b over a. So in this case, we have 2 thirds b over a. Uh, that would be plus or minus two-thirds x. That's the equation for your asymptotes. Eccentricity is c over a. So that's square root of 13 over a, which is going to be 3. So square root of 13 over 3. So uh, for a decimal, we'll go ahead and write that. It's about 1.2 approximately because this right here is 3.61. So we have uh, estimates for that. So if you if were to put that 3.61 over 3, it's about 1.2. We'll take a look at a couple different examples and you'll, we'll be able to compare uh, what this looks like, but usually the larger the number, the wider it ends up being. So this one's going to be a little bit narrower because the number is smaller. The eccentricity always, by the way, should be more than one uh, when you do these kind of problems. So eccentricity for hyperbolas, it's not, it's basically a measurement of how wide or how narrow uh, it actually is. We had uh, the eccentricity for circles is more of a rounded factor, so how close it resembles a circle, but that's different this time. In fact, the eccentricity will never be between 0 and 1. It's always going to be more than 1 
uh, the way you have that because your C value here, uh, you're basically your C is always going to be larger than uh, A and B. So the only way, basically, um, you, you have to always end up getting something more than a, uh, one in that case so when you have it. Uh, so usually that's what you'll see here. If these are whole numbers, then this is going to end up being uh, more than one when you do that. The transverse is going to be 2 times A, 2 times 3 is 6, and conjugate is 2 times 2, which is 4. So we have all that preliminary information complete. Now we're ready to start uh, doing the graph here. So I'm going to uh, erase this to get some space here. Our C value originally was square root of 13, 3.61. Okay, now when you do that, what you're going to do is you're going to start with the center. The center is going to be 0, 0. The A has to go in the direction that it opens up. So that's the same that you had before with ellipses. Because it opens up left and right, you're going to have an A inside each of the parentheses parts there. So the A is 3. We're going to go three places to the, uh, the left and make a dot. We're going to go three places to the right and we're going to make a dot. Your B value is 2. We're going to go up 2 and we're going to go uh, down 2. All these are measured from the uh, center at 0, 0. So this is forming the, uh, the boundaries of our box here. So we have a box that's on the inside here and we, the box looks like this. So we were making a box, so instead of drawing in the, uh, the ellipse like we did before in the last section, we're instead making a box here, and the box is formed by uh, the A and the B. So again, A goes in the direction that's opening up, and on each end here, of the, when we did went both directions with the A, that actually forms our uh, vertices there. So your vertices are going to be plus or minus 3 comma 0. That's your vertices, the, the uh, end parts of the box there. These are not going to be vertices, so the graph does not go through these two points here. It only goes through the points wherever A is at. So the question is, well, why do we have to draw a box? Well, we draw a box because you're going to connect the corners with some dotted lines here. And these dotted lines, those are your asymptotes that we did before. You actually have slant asymptotes here, and that's what's going to uh, define the curve. So the graph is going to follow this one. It's going to hit that dot. It'll curve and it'll follow the other one down there. This one also is going to do the same thing. Follows the dotted line, hits that dot, and follow, goes down the other way. So that's why we need to have the, the box drawn. If you actually put this in a, in, a, in a calculator, you would only see basically the, the dark lines there. Everything else is basically just going to be a setup uh, for it. Now the last thing we have to worry about is the C value. Now C is 3.61. So from the center, if I go 3.6, it's going to put that foci outside the box, and you have it outside the box over here. In fact, whenever you do these, you should always end up something outside of the box because the foci, it has to be inside the curve. So when we talked about the parabola section, the foci is always inside of that particular curve. That's the same idea here. You've got to have those inside there. So what did I do? I basically added square root of 13 and I subtracted square root of 13. So this is going to be plus or minus square root of 13 comma 0 would be the coordinates of that. I added that. Everything went based off of the, the center. So hopefully now you have a little bit better idea of how the hyperbolas works. So again, looking at the models, that's going to tell you which one, which way it opens up left or right and you use the formula uh, to determine that. And then the most, most important thing here is you're making a box. So basically your A and the B, that's always forming the, the boundaries of your box. The A, no matter what, now your A might be smaller or A might be larger, it doesn't matter. A always goes in the direction that it's opening up.